Airplanes more than anything else give us all freedom. It's freedom like we have in our personal automobiles. The freedom to go anywhere we want, essentially any time. Meeker, Colorado. That's where I was born, by the way. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful little town in the, in the Rocky Mountains. I went out and flew a little bit with the, the man who ran the Meeker Airport at that time, a guy named K.E. Cowdery, and he had a 65 horsepower Taylor Craft. Obviously, in order to stay above the terrain, you had to use the air currents. And he taught me well, and I survived flying the much higher mountains in, uh, in South America because of it. My brother and I decided that we wanted to fly to South America to look at business opportunities. We were in college at that time. Had a little money uh, from uh, uh, next year's tuition. Thought we could invest that in, in flying lessons at the, uh, the College Aviation Club. And so uh, learned to fly on a J3 in New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, soloed after eight hours and got my license uh, after 40. And then uh, the day after I got my license, my brother and I took off in a, a, uh, an Aronka Chief and flew to Denver. And it was the first night out, we called our parents and said, hey, guess what? We'll be home in about four days. My great mentor for, for flying was Harry Combs. And when uh, I told him we wanted to fly around South America, he said, well, that's, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But then he, he went on to s describe it in such living detail that we, we were hooked, no, no going back. And Harry did the wonderful thing. He, he gave me 10 hours of instrument training. And had it not been for, again for that 10 hours of instrument training, once in a while, every once in a while we got into a cloud and needed to have that ability, uh, no telling what would have happened. And in Latin America, we, uh, we both spoke Spanish, so that seemed to be a, a good place to go. And so uh, the only way you could, could have a good look at that during a, a summer vacation from college was to fly. Piper Tri-Pacer, terrific airplane. At the time, 150 horsepower, canvas covered, um, pretty high wing loading, uh, but it did, did okay in the Andes when we, when we had to take off out of uh, La Paz, which is 13,404 feet, it answered the call. And it so happened that the business that, where we located was uh, very far from anywhere, very hard to get to. The only, essentially, the only way you could get there was by a little airplane. And so we carved a uh, landing strip out of the jungle. We then went on to develop a cocoa and banana plantation. He was one of the great uh, entrepreneur innovators of, of aviation and uh, but it wasn't until years after that that I met Builder and uh, saw firsthand what all and and thought seriously about all the things that he'd accomplished. I decided that well I really should fully indulge my passion for aviation and I had just felt that the Learjet was the ultimate expression of technology and airplanes and and, and by that time Harry Combs was was president, so I went to Harry and I said, Harry, I'd, I'd like to come and work for you. And he said, again, <laughs> in typical Harry fashion, why the hell would you want to do that? <laughs> and I said, well, rather than work all my life so I could afford to have a Learjet, I think I'd like to be able to fly one right now and, and, and work in the business. And he said, well, man, if you want to do that, come on board. And so I, I went, I joined Learjet as uh, assistant to Harry for strategic planning. The th interesting thing always to me about aviation was what the technology would allow. Because of my strategic planning job, I was able to look and say, what should we be doing? We needed to make more economical airplanes, and that, that uh, led to the winglet uh, airplanes you see on pretty much the entire Learjet uh, line now. One of the most fun things I've ever done in my life was fly around the, the Reno Air Race race course with clay in a Lear 24. And I mean, we were at about 50 feet off the deck. And uh, he was flying the, the Learjet just as he'd flown P-51s and, and won the Air, uh, Reno Air Races. So that was, that was a huge uh, treat. And, and clay has remained a, a wonderful friend. Anybody can make a, a, an airplane that's expensive and use a lot of fuel. The art is in making them inexpensive and fuel efficient. And so that's one of the things that I've been 
working on a lot myself in the last, uh, oh, 25 years. One of the reasons I uh, wanted to develop Spectrum was I literally wanted an airplane that I could afford to fly. Certainly seeing the, the first takeoff of Spectrum was, that was the biggest high I think I've ever had. Adversity is the mother of invention. There are going to be some hard times and know that you've got to persevere in those hard times and that it's worth it. It's worth the battle. The more difficult the challenge, the more rewarding it is when you succeed. And that's always been the thing that's turned me on about this business, to really make a contribution.